How do we as faithful Catholics push back against the culture? That's what we're going to be talking about on this edition of the Catholic View for Women. I'm Teresa Tamio, along with my co-hosts, Elena Rodriguez and Janet Morana. And ladies, for the last few episodes, we really have been diving in to a lot of the problems right. that we see out there in our culture. We talked about gun violence and its effect on children and families and the culture. We talked about overall violence in the media and the connection between the culture of death and media violence and overall in the culture. So how do we push back? Because it's not just in terms of what we see on TV or what we see in the films. We see this being so pervasive in our lives all over, affecting everything, seeping in all different corners of the world in terms of the impression of the media. And we can fight this. We, we, are, we are called to stand up for our faith, That's correct? That's right, absolutely. Indubitably we are, and the title of the show itself is called Push Back because it involves an action. We can't be passive anymore. Right. Being passive is not an answer. It is not a solution anymore. And the fact that you sit there and do nothing is an answer to the problem itself. You're just letting others take over for you and letting the, just letting the current drifting down the current, down the down, downstream, you can't, you can't do that. You, you owe it to yourself, you owe it to your children, you owe it to everybody around you. And the culture is gonna take over whether you do something about it or not. So right. it's time to stand up and give a firm response. Yeah, yeah. Well, and of course, you know, there's this uh, group, which I think is an answer called FOCUS, which uh, has to do with the young people. Fellowship of mm -hmm. Catholic Fel University Students. That's right. Yeah. Acronym for Acronym fellowship. for FOCUS. Yeah. And um, they, they do a great job of, on campuses uh, and they even have focused missionaries. And uh, recently, um, Jim Caviezel was uh, their keynote speaker. And I think what he was addressing and, and almost challenging these young people to, you have got to stand up in this environment and stand up for your faith and, and be faithful to Jesus. He actually said you need to shamelessly express your faith in public and that we weren't made to fit in. We have two clips of Jim Caviezel Let's go to the first one. This was just a, I played the whole thing on my radio show and had a great, great, great feedback for it. Right. And you can still find it out there if you do Jim Caviezel Focus, January 2018. He was speaking to the big focus mm -hmm. conference that they have every year in January. I don't know right. how many thousands of young people they had. They go to it, But again, right. the Fellowship of Catholic University students, phenomenal, talking about standing up for your faith and being, be not afraid, as John Paul II said. Let's watch. The name Saul means great one. The name Paul means little one. While making this film, I learned that by changing one little, one tiny letter, that we can become great in the eyes of God. But it requires us to be little if we wish to be great. But this is the way of the saints. This is the way of the holy. And this is the way Saul became Saint Paul. Callings come when we least expect them. I remember mine vividly. I had this experience I was 19 years old sitting in a movie theater in my hometown of Mount Vernon, Washington. The movie had ended, and out there in the darkness, befriended only by my basketball in the adjacent seat, I had a sensation in my heart that made me think that I'm supposed to be an actor, that this is what God crafted me for that this is what he wanted of me. Yes, my rational sense intervened. I knew nothing about acting, no agents, no managers. I can't memorize to save my life. <laughs> Yet I had a conviction. I had a call. Cut to the spring of 2000. I was offered the role of Edmond Dantes in The Count of Monte Cristo. It was a new adaptation of the Dumas classic. It's a very stressful period. This is the first time I ever had to carry a film on my own, and here I was at 
what I long wanted to achieve, but I had no peace. Everything on that film was a battle. My character, Edmond Dantes, is unjustly imprisoned. While there, both in the book and in the film, he carves on the wall, God will give me justice. And with all the odds set against him, this one solitary man is committed to freeing himself and vanquishing evil, even the evil within himself. There is a wonderful scene between Edmon and a fellow prisoner, a priest, played by the great Richard Harris. In the pit of self-pity, in a moment of real despair, while the priest is on the ground dying, he turns to Edmond and says, your final lesson, do not commit the crime you now serve the sentence for. Remember, God saith, vengeance is mine. And I look down to him and say, but I don't believe in God. He says to me, it does not matter, Edmond. He believes in you. And he does. God loves each one of us personally. And he is there for us, even in our darkest moments of despair. After shooting Monte Cristo, I inexplicably get a call from Mel Gibson. My agent didn't call, my manager didn't call. I didn't know Mel Gibson. I wasn't politicking for the role because nobody knew it was happening. Mel Gibson wants me to play Jesus Christ. He wants the guy with the initials of JC, who just happens to be 33 years of age, to play Jesus Christ. Is that a coincidence? I don't think so. Is your life a coincidence? Or is it all just a chance? Some of you may be miserable right now, confused, uncertain of the future, hurting. This is not the time to back off or to give in. When I was up there on the cross, I learned that in his suffering was our redemption. Remember, the servant is no greater than the master. Each of us must carry our own cross. There is a price for our faith, for our freedoms. I have been literally scourged, hit by the whips, crucified, struck by lightning. Yes, open heart surgery. That's what happens after five and a half months of hyperthermia. One day during the shoot, my arm was wedged under that heavy beam. When someone yanked it in the other direction, my muscles wrenched, and my shoulder separated. I fell to, to the ground, dropped my head into the sand. This take now remains in the movie. In the later part of the film, Jesus experiences a shoulder separation. Well, I now know what that felt like. Every day I had to pick up that thing. It was like a penance. It ripped into my shoulder, tearing at my flesh. And with each passing hour, it got heavier. But had this been shot in a studio, you never would have seen that performance. The suffering made my performance, just as it makes our lives. I got so much out of that talk that he gave, and it wasn't the whole thing, it was maybe about 15, 20 minutes. We have another portion of that presentation we're going to play in the second half of the show, but it just gave me the chills in terms of how important it is for us mm -hmm. not to be afraid to speak up for our faith. I had an incident with a listener uh, who wasn't rude or, or impolite or anything. It was just so frustrating because I was actually talking about this segment on my show after I played it, mm -hmm. and I posted an article, a really good article, believe it or not, that was in the New York Times, 
and it was about the dangers of the birth control pill. And it was one of those articles where you could take from a secular paper, one as liberal as the New York Times, and share it without worrying about anybody attacking you because, oh, you're too religious. Right. It's one of those, it's, it's kind of a really good way to witness to people who, who sure. aren't there yet. And so I was talking about Jim's approach and how we have to speak up and we have to be unafraid. And I said, you know, this is a good way to reach out to people who aren't religious. And I talked about it on the air, then I posted it on the Facebook page. And the, this woman said, oh, well, this is a great article with really good information, but I could never share it because someone might unfriend me on Facebook. Right. Now, you listen to Jim Caviezel talking about the suffering that he went through in shooting the Passion of the Christ right. and the physical pain, right. not to mention the challenges that he had from Hollywood for portraying Jesus. Mm -hmm. And then someone doesn't want to share something as simple as a secular article with good information about something as damaging as on the pill. I couldn't even comprehend that. Well, you know, one of the phrases he used, which I thought was interesting, was that too often we just want to talk about happy Jesus, happy talk yes. about mm -hmm. Jesus and our faith. Mm -hmm. But he talked about more like suffering and redemptive suffering, and we shouldn't be afraid of that. And we shouldn't be afraid of what God might be calling us to do. Mm -hmm. And I, that's what I think is an example, like, of that lady. She couldn't even share an article. An article. Mm -hmm. An article. You know? I mean, well, you, you go to Rome, right? And, and we've all been to Rome many times, and we see these images of our saints, whether it's St. Sebastian or or another saint that has been tortured, arrows thrown at them, hanged upside down, right. like, like St. Peter. Stone. The skin, stone, the skin, the, you know, St. Paul beheaded, Trey Fontani, right. the church, yeah. in honor of, of, of his saint death Lawrence there. on the grill. Yeah, on the grill, turn right. me over, I'm yeah. done on this side. Yeah. Right. And we're worried about sharing an article, I really, yeah. on Facebook. Yeah. It's a real challenge, is what Jim Caviezel does in the talk. But but given the, the, the previous episodes of, of this season and all the information that people have been watching, we just cannot sit back and, and do nothing, as you said, Elena. So when we come back, more from Jim Caviezel, and we'll also have some great ideas how you can, not only, as we said in the last episodes, make a difference in the culture in your home by your own practices, but then do something out there to make a difference in the world. Stay okay. tuned. Welcome back to the Catholic View for Women. Thanks for joining us as we look at ways to push back against the toxic culture. I'm Teresa Tamio, along with Elena Rodriguez and Janet Morana. And what we're doing is taking a really in-depth look at something that Jim Caviezel told students not too long ago with Focus, a fellowship of Catholic University students that they need to stand up for their faith. Here is the second part of that fantastic talk that went viral. You can still find it online. We encourage you to go and watch it again after you see the final portion of his presentation. Some of us now, and you know them, embrace a fake Christianity where it's all happy talk. I call it happy Jesus and glory. Guys, there was a lot of pain and suffering before the resurrection. Your path will be no different. So embrace your cross and race toward your goal. I want you to go out into this pagan world. I want you to have the courage to step into this pagan world and shamelessly express your faith in public. The world needs proud warriors animated by their faith. Warriors like St. Paul and St. Luke who risked their names, their reputations to take their faith, their love for Jesus into the world. God is calling each one of us, each one of you, to do great things. But how often we fail to respond, dismissing it as some mental blurb. It is time for our generation now to accept that call, the call of God urging all of us to give ourselves entirely to Him, to see that gentle hand guiding your path, but you first make, must make the commitment to start praying, to fast, to meditate on the Holy Scriptures, and to take the Holy Sacraments seriously. 
for we are a culture now in decline. A people in danger of succumbing to our excesses. Our whole world is entrenched in sin. And there in the quiet of our hearts, God is calling out to us, each one of us, to give ourselves entirely to Him. And how often we ignore Him, ignore that sweet call. The great saint of Auschwitz, Saint Maximilian Kolbe, said that indifference is the greatest sin of the 20th century. Well, my brothers and sisters, it is the greatest sin of the 21st century as well. We must shake off this indifference, this destructive tolerance of evil. But only our faith in the wisdom of Christ can save us. But it requires warriors ready to risk their reputations, their, their names, even our very lives, to stand for the truth. Set yourselves apart from this corrupt generation. Be saints. You weren't made to fit in. You were born to stand out. For in our country now, we are only too happy to go with the flow. We have a shrine of freedom now where all choices are equal no matter what the consequences are. Do you honestly think this is true freedom? Pope John Paul the Great said, democracy cannot be sustained without a shared commitment to certain moral truths about the human person and the human community. The basic question before a democratic society is this. How ought we to live together? In seeking an answer to this question, can society exclude moral truth and moral reasoning? Every generation of Americans needs to know that freedom exists not to do what you like, but having the right to do what you ought. That is the freedom that I wish for you. Freedom from sin. Freedom from your weaknesses. Freedom from this slavery that sin makes out of all of us. That is the freedom that is worth dying for. It reminds me what Mel Gibson first intoned in his Academy Award-winning film Braveheart when he said to his ragtag army, and I say to you tonight, I see before me a whole army of my countrymen here in defiance of tyranny. You have come to fight as free men. Free men you are. What would you do without freedom? Would you fight? This man says, no, we'll run and we'll live. Yeah? Fight and you may die. Run and you'll live for at least a while. And dying in your beds many years from now, would you be willing to trade all the years from this day to that for one chance? Just one chance to come back here and tell our enemies that you can take our lives, but you can never take our freedom. Every man dies. Not every man truly lives. You, 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 we all must fight for that authentic freedom and live, my friends. By God, we must live. And with the Holy Spirit as your shield and Christ as your sword, may you join St. Michael and all the angels in sending Lucifer and his henchmen straight right back to hell where they belong. Saul means great one. What does Paul mean? Little one. So if we wish to be great in the eyes of God, what do we need to be little? What do we need to be? <laughs> Sorry. Little. 
may God love you and keep you and guide you all the days of your life. And I don't see you here. I can't wait to see you in heaven. I love you. God bless you. Fight hard. Ladies, I just found his talk so, so encouraging That's and right. so inspiring, really made me want to do more. So what can we do to push back against a toxic culture? Well, one of the things is to talk to other people around us. And how do we do that if we are not used to being verbal about things? Or maybe we want to explain something about our faith, but when we're doing this, we suddenly forget <laughs> what, what I want to say. What I, so one way to do it very easily is to become or sign out to be an EWTN media missionary. And this is a program where our viewers can spread out the good news of the gospel that we put out through EWTN. Right. Make sure that your neighbors, that the people at their parish, or maybe uh, your relatives can tune in to watch a specific show or to know about EWTN and to be able to learn from everything that is broadcasted on EWTN, whether it be television or radio or our internet site. To learn more about the faith, on our site we have a faith tab where you can click and you can read all the documents that the church has put out uh, from papal encyclicals to Humana Vitae to all these other documents and questions and answers about our faith are posted there. You can even post your own question. So spreading out that good news that EWTN broadcasts by signing up to be a media missionary. And the way to do it is you go to the EWTN.com website and click on the missionary tab and a whole page comes up that explains what it, what it involves. Right. Part of it can be to take the EWTN programming to a neighbor to a relative or to ask permission with your parish priest and put out the EWTN programming grid in the back of church so other people can benefit yeah, from it. Yeah, talk about a great alternative to what's out there exactly. in, in the secular media. And that involves a, a very simple action on your part but with wonderful consequences. That's right. And of course for many of us, uh, like I, myself, we're involved in the pro-life movement and people say, well, what do you use to, to get go deeper? And we have at Priest for Life a spirituality called the Missionaries of the Gospel of ah. Life. And I was actually the very first person to be professed as a missionary of the Gospel of Life. And this is a whole spirituality. And again, we have it on our Priest for Life website, priestforlife.org slash missionary. And on this idea, it's embracing the spirituality of being pro-life. And, you know, because you can't be out on the front lines, whether you're praying in front of an abortion clinic or counseling women in a pregnancy center or just even standing up for students, you know, who stand up in their classroom and have to debate or defend the life issue. But having that pro-life spirituality uh, that we've developed uh, is, is such a key thing. And I know I find it very strengthening. We have key documents we study and read, like the Gospel of Life and study guides. And uh, I highly recommend that for someone who well, wants to You can't to give what you don't step. have. So you have to, right. to, to really deepen your, strengthen your faith right. through prayer and, and, and both of these these right. activities, media missionary and missionary for the gospel of life, are important. Uh, under the homework number one, pray to discern, Janet, what God right. is calling you to do in order to share your deeply held beliefs. Exactly. And of course, number two in our homework is on your social media, and here's a real challenge, post encouraging reflections from scripture or from the saints. And this way you're going to open up a dialogue on social media. So be brave. Like that lady was afraid to do the article. Come on, we all could be that posting. Was a, I'll never get over that. A secular article. That's right. So everyone could be so, doing that. Uh -huh. And of course, like we just said, consider becoming an EWTN media missionary, uh, which we'll have the link on our website. Number four, consider being the missionary of the gospel of life. And then a simple little thing. I want to challenge everyone here, uh, not us, but our viewers. When you're out with your family, don't be ashamed to say grace in public, whether oh, they're in Donald's yes. Bingo. Yes. or yes. anyone else. Amen. In the name of the all Father, the time. in the Son, and the, and the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Bless us, O Lord, and these thy gifts we are about to receive from thy bounty through Christ our Lord. Amen. amen. If you learn nothing else from this episode, yeah. go forth, and that's a simple act you can do, but what a difference it can make. I, I make the sign of the cross every time every we time take off. Every, yes, every, take off. every time I drive every time I drive by a church because yes, Jesus is there, make the sign of the cross. Every time you leave your home in the morning. Yep. And you don't know how many Many people will see you in the car or whatever. Those are simple That's ways, right. but well, also yeah. to not be afraid Do to speak the afraid. truth and be not afraid. We need to stand up for our culture and push back lovingly. First Peter 3.15, always be ready to give a defense for the hope that is within you, but to do it with reverence and gentleness. Thanks for watching The Catholic View for Women. Be not afraid, and we'll see you next time on The Catholic View.